click. Now my screen is shared. We're going to start over again. Hello there. This is my friend Kitty Love. She's in the mood for some nurturing. So she gets what she wants because she's so adorable. Except she bit me today. But I let bygones be bygones. We're going to, as you can see here, have a very brief review of the complex number system because what we're going to be doing is solving quadratic equations and the solutions are going to be complex conjugates. So let's look at the real number system right here. The real number system contains our favorite numbers, the numbers we were raised with. Negative three, negative two, negative one, just like the temperature, zero, one, two, three. I got a cold winter day. And those numbers keep going down and keep going up forever. And fractions and decimals and square roots and cube roots and other kinds of roots. There are irrational numbers and rational numbers, but they're all in the real number system and they all exist on the X axis. But then there are numbers like this. The square root of negative one. And do you know what Kitty love? The square root of negative one doesn't exist in the real number system. It's not on the X axis. And it's not really anywhere we can see. But it does exist. And so as good a name as any for it, for where it exists, is the complex number system. Here's the symbol for the complex number system right here. And a typical complex number looks like this. Three plus two I, where I is the name given to the square root of negative one. Complex numbers have two parts. They have the real part and they have the imaginary part. But that's an unfortunate problem with our language because the 2i part is not imaginary in the sense that, that we have come to understand the word imaginary. We think imaginary things don't exist, but in mathematics, imaginary numbers do exist. So the three part is a real number, but the two I part is in the complex number system, where the base number is the square root of negative one. When you see a number like the square root of negative 36, I just kind of picked that out of the air, the square root of negative 36, what you do is this. You rewrite it as the square root of negative one times 36. And that's the square root of negative one times the square root of 36. The square root of negative one is I. The square root of 36 is six. We put the real number in front this is 6i. And if I want to write it in complex form, 
I'll write it in zero plus as zero plus six I. The real part, the imaginary part. You can think of it as a being with two heads. It has a right to live, just like beings with one head. Isn't that right? I bet you'd think a kitty with two heads is pretty weird. Well, that was convenient. Whenever we graph a quadratic function and that quadratic function doesn't touch the x-axis, we know that the zeros of that function are going to be complex conjugates. If I take the function and set it equal to zero and solve for x, I'm going to get complex conjugates if this is the function and it doesn't get, it doesn't touch the x-axis. So let's do some problems. We're going to solve that quadratic equation. A is one, B is negative one, C is two. Here's the one. That's A. Here's the negative one. That's B. All right, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that's going to be negative, negative one, plus or minus the square root of negative one, squared minus four times one times two. All over two times one. And that's going to be negative negative one, which is positive one, plus or minus the square root of one, negative one squared is one, minus four times one times two is eight, over two. So that will be one plus or minus the square root of negative seven over two. The minute you get a negative radicand, the number under a square root or any radical is called a radicand. Let me spell it for you. R A D I. C, A, N, D, the radicand. Negative seven is the radicand. The minute that happens, the second that happens, I know that I'm not in the real number system anymore. I have been drop kicked into the complex number system. So we're gonna have to work on this. 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times positive 7 over 2, which will be 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 
times the square root of seven over two. And we keep going. You can start skipping steps once you get used to it. I times the square root of seven over two. Now we're almost done. This is a complex number. We have to put it in complex form. A plus B I form. So we have to say equals A plus B I. But this A and B is not the same as that A and B. It's unfortunate, isn't it? But you got to get used to it. No, this just means a number plus or minus another number times I. This is how we do it. One over two plus or minus the square root of seven over two I. And make sure that I can see that I is on the outside of the square root. Those are our answers. X equals one half minus the square root of seven over two I comma one half plus the square root of seven over two I. And I'll draw a blue box around it because those are our solutions. They are complex conjugate solutions. How about that? So you can look at this as having two parts. You start out normally, you're doing the quadratic formula until you say, uh oh, <clears throat> I've got a negative number underneath my radical. How did that happen? OK, immediately you know you're going to have complex conjugate solutions. So you start translating. Until you get down here. Then you write your answers in the answer box this way. One half minus the square root of seven over two I comma one half plus the square root of seven over two I. And I'm going to have a drink of coffee. Oh, it's wonderful. Let's do another problem. I included the answers here. Aren't they beautiful? Maybe not. But here we go. Now please remember that the format for all quadratic equations, well, let me amend that statement, all quadratic trinomial equations is AX squared plus B x plus c equals zero. This is not in that form. Okay, so we're going to have to add four to both sides before we can start solving. 
So we'll have 5x squared plus 8x equals negative 4. And then I'll add 4 to both sides of the equation so that I can get a 0 over here. Okay, so 5x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. Now, I would rather factor this than have to use the quadratic formula. Um, I don't have a 1 in front of the x squared, so if this were to be factorable, I would multiply A times C and then break it down into factor pairs and try to find a factor pair that adds up to the middle number, positive 8. Let's see if we can find one. 5 times 4 equals 20. And 20 equals 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. And then the numbers start to turn around 5 times 4, 10 times 2, 20 times 1. So there's no reason to keep on with this. Um, positive 20 also, you remember, equals negative 1 times negative 20 negative 2 times negative 10, and negative 4 times negative 5. And none of these add up to positive 8. Okay, now, if that were a negative 2, negative 2 plus 10 equals positive 8, but that means 20 would have to be negative 20. And it's not. So, we're stuck. We're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Let's go. A equals 5. B equals 8. C equals 4. And X equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, 8 is positive, so I don't have to put it in parentheses. 8 squared minus 4 times A, which is 5, times C, which is 4, all over 2 times 5. And that will be negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, and I'm going to find out how, how much distance that takes up. That's going to be 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times 5, that's minus 20, times 4 is minus 80. all over 10. All right, let's start from the left again. X equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 16. I think that's correct. Yes, it is. All over 10.
So, all right, we got to start it again because of that negative number. Under the radical, we're going to be in the complex number system. Negative eight plus or minus the square root of negative one times 16 over 10. That will be eight plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of 16, all, oh, 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 almost forgot my negative, all over well, 10. That was a wavy fraction bar. So what that will be is negative eight plus or minus I times four. The square root of 16 is four over 10. And we wrap around X equals negative eight over 10 plus or minus four over 10 I. Now, eight over 10 and four over 10 have to be reduced. Luckily, that's pretty easy because two goes evenly into eight and two goes evenly into 10 and two goes evenly into four. So all I have to do is divide eight by two and 10 by two and four by two and 10 by two. And what that will give me is negative eight divided by two is four, 10 divided by two is five, plus or minus four divided by two is two, 10 divided by two is five, I. So our solutions are going to be complex conjugates. X equals negative four fifths minus two fifths I comma negative four fifths plus two-fifths I. And I'll put a blue box around it. Let's see if these answers match these answers. And they do, except I put the negative I put this one in front, but order doesn't matter. Not with these. Okay, we have done it again. And the important thing to note is that after I have put my quadratic trinomial in proper quadratic equation form. I use the quadratic formula. I suddenly realize I have a negative number underneath the square root. So I start the process of turning this into a complex number, or I should say complex form. And that's what this is all about. Yep, yep, right there. I think there's one more. Okay, I like it when the numbers are smaller. We have a one, we have a negative one, and we have a four. 
So A is 1, B is negative 1, and C is 4. And X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And that will be negative. Now, now B, oops, B is negative 1. Plus or minus the square root of parentheses negative 1 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times 1. And that will be negative negative 1 is positive 1. <clears throat> <clears throat> plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 16. Uh-oh, we're going to have a negative number under our radical again. What a surprise. X equals 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 all over 2, which will be, my hand is falling off the desk. Let's try this again. There, this will be better. 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 15 over 2 equals 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 15 all over 2. So x equals 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 15 over 2, which equals 1 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 15 over 2i. And so my answers in the answer box will be 1 half minus the square root of 15 over 2 times i, comma, one half, plus the square root of 15 over two, times i. We did it, we did it. We survived solving quadratic equations and getting complex conjugate solutions. If we can do this, we can do anything. So go enjoy yourself doing your math homework. And I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.